Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Today we're going to talk about the persecuted believers in prison behind closed doors in so many other countries. Jeff King is our guest with persecution.org and he has a book, The Whisper. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. We're here today at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention where we're going to do a full show today with Jeff King, who is the president of persecution.org. He is telling the story and ministering to the families of martyrs or people imprisoned for the gospel, people killed or jailed by governments sometimes around the world for their faith and practicing and preaching of Jesus Christ. Welcome to the program, Jeff King. How are you today, sir? I am great, thanks for having me. So what is persecution.org? Yeah, well, it's the website for our organization, International Christian Concern. That's the blandest name you could ever think of, so I always say just persecution.org. Um, and we do a couple things. So we're working in the field with the persecuted. So let's say a pastor gets killed, we take care of his family, uh, church is destroyed, repair, all that type of stuff. That's all bandaging. We bandage a lot of victims. But then we're also building. We're building on the margin, on the front lines of the church where the battle is, the toughest. So as an example, we you know, hired a radio company and started broadcasting gospel into North Korea. So that's all the field stuff. And then we work on Capitol Hill. We work with uh, senators and congressional representatives, sometimes the State Department and the administration every once in a while, depending on who's in there. Yeah. And, uh, and then we do awareness like this, trying to get the word out. Has your group, International Christian Concern, been uh, preparing the reports that are used by uh, the U.S. Center for International Religious Freedom. Yeah, we work closely. That's known as USERP, as you know. The commission, yeah. Yes, so we work very closely with them. Great collection of people. We worked with them for years and years and, and even get behind them when it's time to recertify and get refunded. Uh, but we, yeah, we work very closely with them. So uh, we're friends with uh, Ambassador Sam Brownback, who's been on our program. The U.S. State Department and the federal government has, in fact, by act of Congress, they've created this little branch of the State Department where they have their own ambassador for international religious freedom. Yes. And they have their own researchers and staff, and yeah. they make reports to Congress yeah. to put some countries on the bad boy list, to, to, <laughs> yes. to put it bluntly. Yeah, it's easy. And, and, and the world's worst government persecutors of Christians yeah. are, who's on the list? Oh, I mean, you'd think China and uh, uh, North Korea and all the typical bad boys, so yeah. Right, uh, but recently some of our own friends have been making shameful appearances in the persecution world, like Saudi Arabia or even India. Yeah, and Nigeria. Um, so, and there, you know, for instance, Nigeria doesn't show up on the list. India doesn't show up on the list. And for the audience, it's called a CPC. It's the countries of particular concern. Um, but Nigeria, you've got in the last 20 years, no one knows the real number. These people are killed in the bush, um, but anywhere from 50 to 100,000 killed. You have three and a half million Christian farms taken by radical armed Muslims, never, never going to be returned. Um, and somehow Nigeria comes to the States every year and in speaking with our government says it's so tough. Uh, you know, these guys are out in the field. We can't find them. It's a bush war and it's just a tit for tat. Uh, all complete lies, and really it's, it's a matter of radical Islam, the deep state is in there. And they're controlling intel, they are controlling the army and the police, so nothing ever happens. Uh, India, you mentioned. It, nothing happens in Nigeria without the permission of the government, because their president is a Muslim. Well, even, even when you have a Christian president, the deep state is controlling things. And it's kind of like, this is how it works in America too, the, the president comes and goes. So all the people that actually run Washington and the government are kind of like, we'll deal with them, whatever, you know, we'll be nice. But if they want to go a different way, they go a different way. And you see that with the State Department. Same thing over there. So even if you have a Christian president, the, the control of the army, the control of the police and intel is in the hands of deep state radical Muslims. 
and, uh, and even a tribe called the Fulanis who are Muslim. And so nothing ever happens. We can't find these guys. So the equivalent would be, imagine in the states that in the last 20 years, four or 500,000 Christians have been killed. And the government every year says, we can't figure out who's doing it. It's just such a mystery. It wouldn't fly, right? No. It doesn't fly anywhere. And this is where it's obvious that the fix is in. So that's not very, that's not a very politic thing to say. It's not a very polite thing to say in Washington. And I'm kind of past that. So I just bang the drum all the time and say, we've got to do something different. 50 to 100,000 people murdered. And we know scripturally that the blood of those people, it cries out to the Lord. He hates the injustice and the massive land grab from Islam. Um, so so yeah. what is, what is um, your organization doing to minister to the families of those martyrs, yeah. to the children of yeah. the dead pastors? Yeah, I love that question. So first of all, when, um, what happens to so many of these families and the kids in these families is that they, you, you have to pay school fees in Nigeria. And so they're already poor, but then the husband's murdered and the kids can't go to school. And once they're out of school for a year or two, the schools don't want them. Because it's kind of like with us, they're gonna bring down the test scores. So those kids are lost, it's a lost generation. So we put those kids, we pay school fees, we put them into orphanages if both parents are killed. And a lot of our work though, revolves around communal farms. So for years, you know, I. I would do projects in Nigeria and, I, and lots of things don't go well. They're just, it's very hard to execute. And I kept noticing, it's like, you know, anything we do with farms works really well. So I'd give them seed and give them fertilizer. And this went over a couple of years and I'm like, let's just do this on a bigger scale. And so we would build out farms of like 120, 150 acres. And we would go in, we'd till it and do all the things you do in farming that I don't even know. Uh, and you prepare the soil, but then you give them the seed, you give them the herbicide uh, and pumps for water. They farm, so the families, even the widows, they can take care of themselves. They can keep the family together. They have produce to, to feed themselves and produce to sell. So that's a lot of our work. And then we're also working with tons of wives of martyrs, so. Amen. Okay, we gotta take a short break. More with Jeff King of persecution.org right after this. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Today we are remembering to pray for and commemorate our 45th president, Donald J. Trump, who was, in our generation, perhaps the most pro-life, pro-family, pro-Israel, and pro-America president of our time. To remember him and honor him, we've issued these brand new golden commemorative coins. They have Donald Trump right in the cover and it says, in God we trust, to remind you to pray for our 45th president. For a suggested donation of $45 to our ministry, we'll remember and send you this 45th president coin. And not just that, we're gonna throw in a copy of my book, How to Liberate the World with the Christian Activist DVD. So you get all three, you have a coin to remember to pray and then to learn how to be an effective Christian activist. You get the book and the DVD and then to show the world your Christian faith, we're gonna add this window decal. It says, I pray for religious freedom. So you can remember to pray, learn and show the world that you stand with us at Pray In Jesus Name. Please donate today when you visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Click on the bookstore button at the top and you see all four items for a suggested donation of $45. Or call us right now at 866-Obey-God. Get yours today. Need a physical or spiritual healing? Are you being tested or tried? When Jesus needed to pray, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Do you need to really connect with God? If you're visiting Colorado Springs, come see the Gateway Prayer Garden just south of the city along Interstate 25. Walk our prayer trails among the trees by the beautiful Fountain Creek. Stand at the foot of our large cross and connect with Jesus. Enter our life-size replica of the empty tomb and spend time reading key Bible verses etched in stone along our ground cross as big as a football field. Join our worship gatherings and plan to attend our annual Easter sunrise worship service. We're located off I-25, exit 132A at 8035 Bandley Road, just north of the KOA campground. Experience Jesus at gatewayprayergarden.org. That's gatewayprayergarden.org.
defending your religious freedom. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. We're doing a full show today with Jeff King, who is the president since uh, the early 2000s of persecution.org, and he has a new book called The Whisper. Jeff, I want to talk to you about this because these yeah. are the stories of Christians in prison. Yeah. Yeah, it's the stories of the persecuted, but you know, uh, it, it's interesting. I was called to, uh, to ICC persecution.org through a miraculous dream. It really was miraculous. I'd been with Campus Crusade for uh, over a decade. And uh, so I land in this place and start learning about persecution. So I had, I had been in ministry, in international ministry, running all over the world. You've been to 75 countries. I've been to 75 countries. And, um, and I'd already done a lot of international travel then, but I still wasn't that tuned in to persecution. And so I'm, one of the first things, I'm opening the files and seeing what we're doing there. And I, oh my gosh, I just can't tell you what I was seeing. And for the first time, really brutal, brutal stuff. And, um, but right away, I, you know, I land with uh, ICC and the Lord keeps whispering to me. And he says, I want you to learn the lessons of the persecutor, learn the lessons of the martyrs. And, and they're not just for you, I want you to shout them. And uh, so if I had to package that up, I would say it was listen, learn, and shout. And so I, I think, okay, what's well, gonna come to me next week? I'll figure out what I have to shout. And, but anyways, it takes a long time. But I keep seeing some things, and right after that, this is this really opened my eyes. I go to China, and I ask for a meeting with um, Chinese pastors that had been in prison for a long time. And so these guys had been in prison in the concentration camps, so the worst of the worst. Wow. Longest one was 24 years. And I asked them, I say, tell me about persecution. And they say, persecution is a gift. And I'm like, you know, I'm from DC, I'm kind of street smart, and I'm like, what? It doesn't feel like a gift when you're in jail. It doesn't feel like a gift, and they even said that. He's like, it's not a gift you'd ever give to anybody. It's not a gift you want, but it is an absolute gift. And they said, look, the, the deal is when we, we are persecuted, it breaks our independence. We become dependent, and then that gives us connection, and then his power can flow, and it makes us and it makes the church pure. So I'm like, oh my gosh, that was... You depend on God, and in the middle of your suffering, the Holy Spirit shows up and purifies your worship, your prophetic speech, and you're able to flow the Holy Spirit to these other prisoners around you. Absolutely. And there's an absolute connection to here in the West. But so that was the first thing they said. And then I said, what's your biggest worry? And this is a couple hour conversation. So I, these are the gems that have been left over time. And, and I said, what's your biggest worry? And they said, our biggest worry is that the guys, the mentors, the, the pastors they're mentoring, they haven't been hunted and imprisoned, tortured and murdered like we've been. Wait, wait, wait. The people on the outside, the pastors who are still in the public, they have not yet suffered to the point of shedding blood. So these pastors had come out of the concentration camps and their generation had been decimated. Again, these guys, the longest one was 24 years in, in a concentration camp. What's your biggest worry, pastors? They had all spent at least 10 years in prison. The pastors we're mentoring now, they're out of prison. The pastors we're mentoring now, they haven't been hunted and murdered and tortured like we were. That's our biggest worry because of that connection. And you, you start putting this together and you say, you know, it's like, so that's a, why would the Lord put me in this place? What is he trying? To, what am I supposed to learn and shout? And then I see it. So we're not persecuted here. I mean, it's beginning and there's probably a trajectory, but we're in early, early stages. Yeah. So, but we've all been in prison. Now our prisons have different names and those are anxiety or bankruptcy or, you know, being fired, divorce, you know, a rough marriage. It's, we've all been in prison and we don't have the endurance. We don't have the knowledge of how to endure our sentence. And so who does? These, the persecuted, they're the ones that found the light in 20 years in complete darkness. They found the manna to live off. And so then I saw it and it's like, it seems like their message is all about death, but it's all about life. And then you see it, you see that suffering, it's not a destination. It's a door of transformation. The Lord's trying to take us through this place of suffering to get us to where we can't go without it, would be the way to say it. Yeah. For 
American pastors who yeah. may be watching this program, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, we have not yet resisted sin to the point where we are persecuted. We feel, I feel like in America, and I've been through some trials, but nothing yeah. like what you're talking about in yeah. China. Yeah. Um, do you think we're just too soft? Are we not bold enough? If we were a little more edgy in our preaching, we would be persecuted, but instead, American pastors are sometimes afraid to, to rock the boat. Yeah, and so these are such complicated times, and I, I wouldn't judge any pastor for anything. These are very tricky times, but my heart would be, yes, we need to be bold, and, it's, and to say we are a countercultural movement. We are a revolutionary movement. We're not, in the end, we want to be winsome, but we're, you know, Paul was winsome, but he was in prison and stoned because he was bold. But the biggest thing, it's not just on the pastor, it's not the preaching, it's like what's missing in the church. And what I see is that we're not doing evangelism. We're not teaching the followers how to do evangelism, how to get outside the church and bring the lost to the gospel. It, it, it kind of devolves for the most part to bring them to church. That's not evangelism. So you just right. think if we have bold preaching and if we're out there and, and bringing the dead to life, you know, our problems would be over. You know, our, our goal isn't, isn't to end our political problems. It's to bring the dead to life, though. So the book you have just published is The Whisper. I'm going to read the subtitle. Lessons of Renewal Whispered from the Prisons of the Persecuted. So these are lessons that came out of those prisons by those pastors in China and other places. Uh, they have something to say to us, and that is kind of the purpose. You also have a, a, an email. How do, your, how do you distribute your content to us? Yeah, well, they can go to persecution.org. You you'll find us, International Christian Concern, on YouTube. Uh, we have a newsletter, uh, uh, per, I'm sorry, a magazine, Persecution. So if you go to persecution.org, you can find all that stuff. Yeah, and the book is on Amazon. Okay, again, the book is The Whisper by Jeff King. Let's take a short break. When we come back, American foreign policy from the State Department. Hi, I'm Dr. Chaps. I wanna introduce my friend, Mike Lindell, who wants to help support our ministry in the work of PIJN News. Uh, Mike, what do you think? Well, I think everybody out there, y'all need to get behind Pray in Jesus Names Ministry. Dr. Chaps here, but this great ministry needs your support and you can, you should donate to it. You can also use your promo code Pray News and anything you're getting from my pillow with big discounts, a lot of those proceeds are coming right back. I'm gonna put them right back into this, into your amazing charity and show. Well, thank you, sir. I accept that endorsement and we support your work at MyPillow.com. Remember everybody, when you visit, use the promo code PRAYNEWS, you get a big discount and our charity gets a little bit of help. So thank you, Mike Lindell, for your support. They get a lot of help, not a little bit, a lot of help. <laughs> we need all we can get for Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm gonna pass the savings directly on to you. For a limited time, you get premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, and that's the lowest price in history. I used to think that sheets were just sheets. I got the Giza Dream sheets. They are the most comfortable sheets I've ever had. The MyPillow topper for the first time has enabled me to have a cool night's sleep. I'm able to go to bed and just get rest. That's three inches of wonderful that's in the MyPillow mattress topper. It's just like a firm cloud. When I got my pillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. Go to MyPillow.com right now to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you can get my premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, the lowest price ever. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Recently, uh, Joe Biden traveled to Delhi, India, and he met with Prime Minister Modi. And uh, I've been to India several times, and I'm concerned now that within the India government, the BJP, which is kind of like their Republican Party, right? Yeah. yeah. They're aligning too much with 
their religious right, ironically, which is <laughs> the Hindu radicals yes. in the RSS. They have a sort of a Nazi party that wants to yeah. Hindu nationalize the entire country, which means they persecute Christians. Yeah. And in 11 states, uh, out of 30 states in India, 11 have passed, and these are the religious states, the red states. Uh, I've been to these. They pass anti-conversion laws. Mm -hmm. What that means is a Christian preacher can be jailed or fined if they share the gospel with a neighbor. What should American policy be and why is Biden looking the other way? <laughs> yeah, so I'd say, first of all, let's think about India geopolitically. They're a counterweight to China. And they're also, so there's a, they're a bulwark against China. So they're gonna be a very close ally. There are a rising uh, uh, business, they're titans. Um, and so, and then there's even uh, a very tough situation where they're across from Pakistan. These are, you know, it's nuclear power. Yeah. So it, it's for a tricky situation. There's multiple interests there, but, uh, and I would even tweak that messaging a little bit because I'd say Prime, Prime Minister Modi is the head of the snake. So I would say that he's not aligning too closely. It's like he is the BJP. They're, they are in lockstep. And these guys, you, you call them Nazis. That's what they are. They're radical uh, Hindus. And they think there's no place for Christianity in India. And they're very intent on strangling it. Um, and so now Modi is a very savvy politician, very sharp. And he's a world politician. So you're never going to hear him say anything that's going to get him in trouble. Right. But his governors and his state leaders and the BJP leaders, the hate speech that they put forth that radicalizes their followers and gets them to attack churches and pastors, beating them up in the street, invading the congregations on a Sunday and beating everybody up with sticks, breaking, breaking bones, sometimes even killing. That's the work of the BJP. And Modi sits at the top, but he never says anything. So his job is just to stay silent. And the message is clear, because imagine a political party here saying, these people are the problem in our country, they're enemies, they're enemies of everything we hold dear. And basically it's like, go get them. And then the president never says anything. People are, people are attacked on and on, nothing is ever said. It's a very clear message that you should attack these people and nothing will happen. We need to strangle Christianity. So in 2008, there was a genocide in Orissa yeah. where uh, I want to say 200 churches were burned, yeah. 100 pastors were assassinated, killed by angry Hindu mobs, yeah. and we have been caring for the children of the dead pastors yeah. Yeah. since 2012 yeah. in, in, in our, through our generosity to the orphans of Orissa. Yeah. Last year in Manipur, a northeastern state in India, again, there was anti-Christian persecution where uh, uh, over 200 churches were burned, several pastors or ministers were killed, mm -hmm. and the Christians were forced out of their homes, yeah. and, and they had to, they've lost their territory, they've lost their homes, because the Manipur government is complicit in the killing of Christians. Mm -hmm. But the national government in Delhi doesn't even talk about this. Mm -hmm. Nothing to see here. That's it. We won't even comment. Yep. How can they get away with this? Well, they do, and I think it's that dynamic we just talked about. It's Modi at the top, very savvy, very popular president, very skilled. Um, and you know, what's the, the hate speech is not, you won't find it in English. And so for the most part, it's all hidden and people don't know. And I think what you're getting at is how, how can this be going on and, and why is our president not dealing with this? And it's not just a Democrat or Republican issue. It's a, it's a problem with the value of, of India geopolitically and how it aligns with American interests, but it's, a, it's really wrong at a very, very base level. It should be called out, and it doesn't take much. So a, you know, a little public statement from the president, a couple of those, would really start to fix things back home. It's the bully pulpit not being used at all. And then you have the State Department, which is under the president, and the, um, the IRF, which is that department within the state, you know, the IRF is that department within the state that deals with persecution. They a lot of bright people. The State Department is full of very bright, savvy people, but they're not allowed to always speak the truth. So India should absolutely be on that CPC, the bad boys list. But it's a political thing coming down from the administration where that's not going to happen. So, Yeah, Joe Biden has been looking the other way. Even though he went to India, he could have spoken about this. He did not. 
I think what there will be a change if President Trump is reelected. He will maybe appoint somebody uh, like Sam Brownback to be the international ambassador for religious freedom. Yeah, and they will speak out um, to <clears throat> to to put countries like that on the list of countries of particular concern. Yeah. The CPC list yeah, yeah. means that Congress will stop trading with them. If we stop trading with India or because they are persecuting the church, that will get the attention of their economy. Yeah. I think President Trump will be that bold and, and they'll they'll need to pay attention and stop their own anti-Christian persecution inside of their country. Yeah, and he had made statements before, and we can we can be close allies and still have disagreements. And all you have to do is, as the U.S. president, is bring things up. And Trump had done that, so I, I would really love for the Biden administration to do the same. It's not going to break the relationship. No one's calling for that. We don't want that. But we need to deal with truth, and let's push these guys back a little. And it doesn't take much. Yeah. You know. Okay, the book is The Whisper. You can find it. It's by Jeff King. Uh, a 30-day devotional with thoughts and prayers from pastors in prison for their faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, Jeff, where is your website and how right. can people sign up for your newsletter? Get, I'll give you the last Thank word. Thank you. It's persecution.org. Um, Would you lead somebody in a prayer for the ch persecuted church? Absolutely. Yeah, it's persecution.org. Uh, that's the website and you can get involved with helping victims. But more importantly, sign up for the magazine. It's truly a magazine about persecution, and that's the key, to learn what's going on with our brothers and sisters. So, um, and just to, I'm gonna, let me pray here, and it's not just for the persecuted, it's to pray for everybody that we would learn from our brothers and sisters who have been through so much pain and suffering. They have so much to teach us. But Father God, I lift up uh, all those listening, and I pray for your touch on them today. And if they are in the darkness, if they're going through a deep struggle, I just pray for their heart and to understand that our suffering is meant to take us somewhere. It's a door to transformation. It's not a destination. Uh, and the further thing, Lord, we see looking, looking through history, nothing can stop the church. Nothing can stop it. I look at China. I look at Iran. Your church is eternal because it's not us. It's you and it's your force that is working through the world. We lift up our brothers and sisters for boldness. We lift up our, the church in the United States for boldness, that they would evangelize, that they would go out and say, we must bring the dead to life. That's our prime job. And we'll teach our followers to do it. Give people a heart for the persecuted brother and sister. They have so much to teach us. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. We need your donations, large or small, to bring you these kind of interviews. Would you please sponsor our TV show when you visit PrayInJesusName.org. If you need prayer, call us today at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best financial donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now, 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.